You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. Today, we have a true honor having a special guest today. He's an entrepreneur, but he also has an amazing journey, life story that he will be able to share with our audience today. Man, his name is Andrew uh, Delgado. And Andrew, first and foremost, I want to say uh, thanks for taking time to talk to us today, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I never had it so good. (laughs) That's awesome, man. I'm over here in sunny, well, gloomy Southern California right now, born, raised in L.A. So I'm here just uh, just doing it, man. Man, L.A. is a, it's a great place, man. I have a cousin out there and he's, he's doing some awesome things. So, man, so when it comes to your clothing brand and, and what you do, kind of walk uh, the audience through what inspired you to start your brand and, and how you got the opportunity. Okay. Yeah. Well, my, my brand is more like, um, you know, what I'm doing right now is more of it's, it's dad of dads and it's more of my, um, my personal endeavor or the end of my, uh, I guess not my endeavor, but it is definitely my passion right now. You know, I've been in the apparel industry for 20 years, building brands, usually building other people's brands. Um, and how I got started, you know, in that is, um, I was newly sober. I've been sober 19 years. And a friend of mine had a a clothing brand in the skate surf industry. Being from Southern California, growing up around all the skate brands, all the surf brands, I've always been, you know, I've snowboarded, I've skated, I've surfed, I've, you know, done all of it, baseball, basketball, like all the outside stuff that you can do. So I've always very uh, driven by action sports. And uh, he had started a brand called Ambiguous Clothing in 96. I'm 52 now. So when I say 96, I think like 10 years ago. No, but actually I was like 30, 35 years ago. And he started that brand out of the door, out of his dorm room um, in Chapman University. And um, yeah, I'd gotten sober and he'd had the brand for a while. I helped him out early on when he started it. And it was just an industry that I really liked because it was young. It was fun. And um, and so that's what started. That was my my gateway into um into the to the apparel industry and having your own brand and i started from the i mean i've started from warehousing team management sample cage like i've just kind of did everything around in the industry which helped me um you know use my network and car uh, and, and all the connections that i've had to knowing buyers and knowing owners and things like that so i've always just I mean, if I was to give any advice is just to remain teachable, not only in, in in your career, but in life. And that's taken me a long way. I've kind of always had a great, um, a good um, work ethic that was instilled by my father, always seeing him up going to work and grinding and doing whatever it took. So I kind of always had that where I think a lot of people, uh, it takes a lot longer if you haven't been around that, you know, if you're, if you're kind of used to just coasting or cruising or looking for the easy way out, which I've done. I'm not saying I'm oblivious to that, or I'm not saying I'm void of that, but it it really helped me in a younger age, just being around a father who, who, um, who really uh, instilled that. uh, I kind of can't even say instilled it, just what I grew up around. You know, I seen that, I I seen that work ethic of my father. So as I got older and then when I got sober and in this industry, it's, um, it really helped out just to jump in and, and and get busy and do whatever whatever it took kind of to get the job done. I've 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 built brands. I've been um, a part of some great teams and great men's brands, lifestyle brands, I guess they call it now. But I've always just tried to remain uh, remain teachable. You know what I mean? In 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 and in life, and obviously within this industry, it's been such a big part of my identity because I've been with it for and around it for so long. Um, you know, so it's it's uh it's kind of like second second nature to me, you know, but I'm always willing to to learn and 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 do better. So with that said, when I wanted to start my own brand or my own um uh yeah, I guess my own brand, my own label, my own um 
my own thing, my own deal. Um, I had already knew where, how to source. I knew domestic production. I knew, um, you know, getting stuff overseas, uh, how to ship, how to pack, like just all those little things. And, and when I was in it, like if I was in the warehouse for, you know, th- a year or two, or just helping out, it's like, God, I, I never looked at it like I'm going to be here forever. And what I, what I, what I, what I tell the young guys that I, that, 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 that are into getting into the clothing brand or anything, it's just like, and if you're getting paid to do it, just look at it like um, you're getting paid to learn. You know, you're getting paid to learn more so the bigger picture, have the long view. You're getting learned. You're getting paid to learn something now that you can probably take, you know, throughout your life. That's what my, I guess, my older self would tell my younger self, even though my younger self would be like, I want it now. I want this. I want the, you know, I want all the all the shiny objects. I want all the accoutrements. I want the the watch. I want the pin. I want the shoes. I want the, you know, I want all these things now, but you know, for me, and I think it part of it had to do from what I was doing when I wasn't sober and just that hustling mentality of like, just learning everything about anything, you know, before I could really put that, 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 that mindset together and definitely, um, you know, a strong mindset, a good work ethic, like all these little things that I learned throughout life that I can look back now at 52. When I was at 20, I thought I knew everything, you know, at 25, I thought I knew everything. I'm I'm here to like, really tell you, like, I'm here at 52. And I, and I don't know everything. I'm still learning just a lot to do with business, with communication, uh, especially communication. You know, that's what I'm really hyper-focused on right now is just make sure that I'm clear at what I want, I'm clear at where I'm going, and I know how to ask for it, and and not have this ego or this pride that I might have at you know during my younger stages of, of of a, uh, of growing up or of having a business or of, of being a, an employee you know to my employer. Just to kind of set that aside, be willing to ask questions, and not be scared. That's another thing that I work on with a lot of men. A lot of kid, a lot of young men right now. Whether you're a father, whether you're, you're you're just starting out your your career, is to really be able to soak everything up and ask questions, and just remain. It goes along with all just remaining teachable. And with that said, you also have a a, str- a story of of struggle with alcohol and heroin addiction. When you look back, I mean, what? What was the turning point for you when you said, okay, enough of this, there's more, you know, to life, there's more to what I have left to do. What was that turning point for you? How, how did you transition out of that? So the, the turning point is, is I, I had just got sick of, I was spiritually sick, emotionally, um, at a bottom, um, obviously physically. Cause I was, I was, you know, I was, I was addicted, I was addicted to heroin, but, um, you know, when I told you earlier about my, the work ethic my father had, you know, I didn't grow up around seeing drugs. Uh, I, I grew up around it, but my my immediate, like my father, my mom, they weren't big drinkers. They weren't drug users, but I was always, um, I always wanted to do, um, I always wanted the most with to do the least, with least effort. So if I saw if I saw these people, you know, I saw someone with with money and my like my dad, you know, we never had a lot of money, but I saw that I saw him work. So that's where the the, the, the that that um that strong work um, ethic came in. But I was also lazy. I was always procrastinating. I'm like, I'm not going to work that hard. I know I can get that hard. I, I would always like be looking for the shortcut, the angle. And um, so with that said, and the lifestyle that I was exposed to and and what I really liked at a young age um, growing up in the eighties and nineties in, in, in movies and gangs and colors, Scarface, like, you know, how much power and control all that got. I never really wanted to work for that, but I really wanted to, to do that and be a part of that lifestyle, um, which was detrimental, you know, in the long run for me, because I did have that and I did have things in this and that, but at the end I had nothing. So back to your question, what was the turning point at 29? Um, I had, gone to a, a re uh I, I had OD'd. I went to I was in living in Orange County and I went to a um a facility at, at the hospital and they said, hey man, you should probably get sober. And I'm like, what I I know I have a problem with these this heroin, obviously pills, coke, crack, yes. But the drinking, I just couldn't believe it. So it took me four more years 
of in and out, in and out, hurting my family once again, hurting myself over and over, being, um, you know, the shame and guilt that comes, uh, well, you might not know, but there's a shame and guilt of self, of self-hatred that comes with living uh, a lifestyle of, of a drug addict and of an alcoholic and a screw up and a mess up. Um, my family had all gone, you know, everyone had just been sick of my shit, which I don't blame them, you know, um, because you can only put your family, your loved ones, your wife, your children through. So I was single at the time, obviously, but you can only put your family and people through so much before they're just going to have enough, you know, and my last like codependent, my last, uh, my mom, you know, and she told me she was, I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know, I, I can't do this. I can't see you. I'm just waiting for that call that you're dead or in jail once again. And I, and I can't do it. And, um, but even after she told me that, you know, you know, Mr. Reed, it, it wasn't enough. It wasn't until a year later, till I was uh, 33 that I got sober. So there was four years of in and out to answer your question. What was it? It was accumulation of, of, of a lot of things, but I had just, I had run out of options, man. I had hustled all I could. I had, you know, been been on that part i've uh, been on, I've, i was at that point where either i'm gonna i'm gonna go out and od or i'm just gonna i'm gonna blow my brains out you know i'm gonna hang myself just that just a, a desperation that a lot of people can't even fathom or 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 even think of because a lot of people will like be drinking too much drinking heavy say hey i gotta cut back and they can you know pull out of it some people will get a 502 you know what i'm not doing that anymore and they don't do it and they don't have a real real problem i had to really concede to my innermost self that this was killing me. If I continue to do it, I'm going to end up in the morgue. I'll end up back in prison or I'll end up dead. So I had to, I, it was kind of that mindset that I didn't have, but I just had come to believe or came and thought and, and, and looked at like, okay, these are my three options. That's it. I didn't have any more options. Me hustling this person, me getting a chick and living with her, me doing like all these other little like scams and schemes towards the end that I had done, I'd run out. I'd run out of, you know, everything and everybody that I'd, I had uh, held dear and close to my life, they were all gone. I was by myself, um, you know, f- physically, mentally, and spiritually. I had nothing anymore. I was just bankrupt in all areas of my life. And in 99, when I was introduced to, you know, a recovery, uh, you know, a, a, a 12-step recovery program, I just went back there because those people understood. They they knew my plight. They knew my struggles. And I started doing that. And, 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 and I started, um, you know, healing, you know, through the, through the 12 steps and through, through a power greater than myself, really. And and I still practice that. I still do that. I'm still very active in that anonymous program. I help other men um, and women that want it, you know, that need it and that are willing to do it. But I had to come to that decision myself, because like I said, for four years, I'd go out, I'd come in, I'd smoke weed, I would just do this. I would just do pills, I'd come back. I'd just do blow, I would just do, i just drink. And it just got worse and worse. You know, all the combinations uh, of of what I thought would work out or how I can maintain or manage the addiction um, and the obsession to drink and use, I just, you know, it, it just didn't work for me anymore. And I was sick. I was full of abs. I mean, full of abscesses. I was, I was, uh, you know, I had limbs that were turning colors and gangrene was setting in because of the, you know, intravenous drug use. And yeah, it was bad. It was, it was, it was dark. It was horrible. And one of the messages that I have to, that I want to, that I tell when I'm in, you know, working in recovery, it's like, it doesn't have to get that bad and it might not get that bad and you could die and you could, I just try to show them all the variables of, of what my experience has been. And, you know, now here at 52 father of three, at, at, at as many years as I've been sober, if I can condense what I've learned in, you know, in recovery, in business, in, in all these areas for, for young men that might be, um, that might not have any mentors, any coaching, no father figure, no guidance. If I can condense what I've learned for them so they don't have to run into all these pitfalls that I have in life, like that's, you know, my, I know is my purpose. You know, my purpose is to build the man that I always wanted to be and give that man to the world. That's kind of like my um, my credo uh, going forward. So with dads of dads, what you see is like my brand or my label. Now it's 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 not only dads. It's just it's it's just those um, it's for those men right now that are suffering in silence and that don't want to say like, hey, I don't understand or can you help me? 
like, yeah, we can, let's just start a conversation. Let's, let's, um, let's see what we got working with here because no one's going to know how you feel if you don't speak up. You know what I mean? No one's going to know that you're hurting. If you don't ask for help, you can go through life thinking it's all good. Everything. How you doing? I'm great. How you doing? Good. You know, cause I understand that I get that. I was taught not to show emotion. I was taught not to tell anybody your feelings. That's a sign of weakness. That's a sign of someone's going to get over and come up on you. Is all, is some of that true? It could be. Yeah, it might be. But I think now that in this, in this, where we are now in 2023 with everything that's going on, everything that's happened, all these things on self-awareness, self-development, I think it's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more, not understandable, but it's just, you know, a lot of young men are more aware that it's okay to, to speak on your feelings or talk about what you're going through, you know? So that's, that's what I'm hearing. That, that's, that's what dad of dads is, is, is trying to really um, usher in the couple generations where we have had, there has been lack of what I think of ritual or initiation and, in, you know, into manhood. Once again, you listen to our Refocus Radio talking to our guest today, Andrew Del, uh, Delgado. Uh, when you are using your platform to inspire uh, the guys out there, I mean, I think that's very important. I, I mean, there's so many distractions in the world and there's not enough of influencers like yourself that, that can help uh, this generation of, of men to not just apply themselves, but to really build their future today. And and you kind of help them with those uh, daily actions that that can position themselves for a better future. When you look at yourself today versus where you used to be, I mean, kind of illustrate uh, real quick for the audience before we let you go, how that looks today and how you feel today prior to when you were struggling uh, with those drugs and that dark time of your life? Okay, so my outlook back then, my mis- my conception of what a man was, was a, not, a, a, a wad of money, a hot girl, a car, a house, all these material things, right? And I got all those material things, but you know what? I still wasn't happy. I still wasn't happy because I self-destructed. So that was what, that was my, um, my uh, vision of what a man was, you know, all these outside things, which I see being promulgated through music, through, and it's nothing new. It's, I mean, that's not what I'm talking about here and, 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 and what men have been chasing for centuries. It's nothing new. Women, things, whether it was land, whether it was heads, heads of cattle or go back in the, you know what I mean? Like men have always, it, it's, it's nothing new. So what, how I look at life now though, is, you know, I'm a father and I'm a husband, you know? And so I want to be the best version of myself so I can raise my children correctly and not, and, and not let them grow up thinking that, you know, all this material thing is, is, is the end all be all because I've been around and I've sponsored, you know, millionaires, billionaires, actors, singers, rocks, you name it. And I've, um, I've had more, I've been to more burials and more funerals that, that if they've had all the outside stuff and none of the inside stuff. So I want to be the best um, husband for my for my wife because she deserves that because I don't want my kids to to see what a broken grow up in a broken home. I was I had a mother until I had another father for till till I was eight till my mom uh, remarried. So I want to keep the family unit together. That's what's important to me. So I want to um, be that for my wife, and I want to be that superhero that 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 uh, father that can walk in purpose but can also be vulnerable. You know to my children. So they see that. So my son knows how to treat a woman. So my daughters know how to be treated by a man when they get older. Like I want to be the role model for them, but all that has to start with me. You know what I mean? I realize that today. Um, Can it, can, can it, they're going to have their own path. I believe that God has their story written for them. And my, my, my duty now to where I am at 52 is just to be the best version of Drew, right? Mm -hmm. Minus 
drugs, alcohol, but that isn't the end all be all. That doesn't mean that just because I don't drink or slam heroin that I am this perfect figure. I'm this this awesome husband that I'm this dad that doesn't that doesn't get angry, that doesn't lose his temper, that doesn't raise his voice. The bigger the bigger um picture for me now today is is that I know how to apologize. I know how to make an amends. I know how to set wrong um uh, to set right my wrongs, you know, all these things. I know how to be responsible today. I know how to be accountable today. So that's what I kind of like. That's what I want to be looked at. I want to be just looked at as someone who stands in service, someone who stands in purpose. And like the whole dad of dads, you know, for me is someone that can um, control his emotions at any given time. Because you're going to have high highs, you're going to have low lows. How can I control my emotion? How can I respond versus react? out there cuz i still up until 2 years ago i was still threatening people in business and in, in in life and wanting to rip people out of their cars so i don't i don't want to bring that type of energy around my home or in my home and i have and i'm not saying i never will but that's what i work on you know i work on to be the best version of myself so my my kids see that so my my employees see that so my my people in my career you know what i do see that i want to be the best version of drew once again, listen to Refocus Focus Radio, talking to our guest today, Andrew Delgado. You can go check out his Instagram. It's uh, dads of dads, that's dad dot of dot dads. And you can check out our Instagram. And man, once again, I want to say thank you. Flat out of time, but I want to say thank you, man, for taking time talking to us today. And appreciate your time, man. Man, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Thank you.